okay, we are going to do something that I've never been able to do. This is the new version of ScreenFlow, ScreenFlow 10. And um, up until now, we've never really been able to record because the latency when you're using the ScreenFlow audio driver has just been pretty awful. So we're going to try this real quick. Um, I'm recording into an audio track. I do have low latency mode turned on because it's a, a session that's already in progress. In order to get latency down, you have to do that. But now I'm just going to record. Already left. And now I'm here. Singing all alone. Singing for my own. And now I'm here. Looking over there. Deciding how to care. Raising up our hands, trying hard to understand things beyond our grasp. Shouting to the wind, desperation shows the rain makes us grow. Okay, so I mean, I just, I mean, it feels great. It feels like it's really really good in terms of the latency. It's not perfect. Uh, I know that even though they said it's zero latency added into your system, uh, it has a 20.6 millisecond round trip, which is the 16.7 of that is on the output, which means it's not zero latency added. Because if I go back to just the Steinberg uh, for the output and the input, it's like sub 10 milliseconds. Uh, let's come in here. The way that you have to set this up, uh, you have two different steps. One of them in screen flow, uh, with our preferences where you have to do DAW support, allow device to be sound output. That means it's always there. Uh, it no longer just comes and goes when the software is on and then you disable the sound output monitoring. So those two things are engaged. Uh, it shows up in here and then you create a multi-output device. And then in that multi-output device, I select the Steinberg and the Telestream. And uh, then I gave it the name Use with ScreenFlow just to make sure that I, I knew which one I was using. I've tried this with the aggregate device and that's a lot harder because it still works, but you always have to choose, you know, in this case, three and four and Logic doesn't like to do, you know, multiple things on the output. So I just have it here with the use with ScreenFlow. Then the input device is my normal interface. And um, it's working with a 32 sample buffer size. This project is not huge, but it certainly isn't like nothing. I mean, we have all these tracks and the fake choirs from uh, the sounds uh, east-west. And we have, you know, drummer and some other keyboards and some effects and things. A decent amount of things. And so, I mean, it's pushing it a little bit. Let's take this out of uh, the low latency mode. And now I'm here singing all alone, singing for my own. I'm going to re restart that without the actual input selected. Still bigger, okay. And now I'm here singing all alone, singing for my own. And now I'm here looking over there, deciding how to care. Cool. So that means when you're doing tutorials and things with Logic, if you want to actually demonstrate real-time recording, ScreenFlow is now an actual option. And it's something you can use instead of having to do other programs like OBS, which you could figure out a way to do that with pretty low latency uh, or any of the other ones. But now ScreenFlow 
is really designed to work with DAWs and uh, to be able to support what you're doing there instead of fighting against it. So awesome. Uh, if you're interested in more about this and learning about how to do this with ScreenFlow, let me know. We can do some uh, videos on it. But for the moment, just a kind of a yell of excitement that this is going to be a little bit better.